Hi, I'm Kashish. Um, I am a singer, songwriter, and I am releasing an EP with love um, very soon in May. <laughs> Awesome. So yeah. your EP, The Hype, came out last May, mm -hmm. and as you just said, you have an EP coming out this year. Yeah. What is it going to sound like? Is it anything like The Hype, or is it totally different? Um, so it's totally different because uh, when I made The Hype, I was relatively inexperienced in the songwriting world, so I wasn't really confident in my own songwriting ability. So I had uh, my friend, Kelly Plant, help me songwrite and uh, really kind of just show me the ropes of like how her process is. And then um, I actually co-opt in California and I um, song wrote with my friend Lane as well. And um, the hype is kind of like a mixture of their songwriting styles with mine. Um, with Love is very much me. Uh, this second EP is very my style my own unique take on what, you know, Lane and Kelly have taught me. And I'm so appreciative for their help. And I, I, I really learned a lot from them and creating the hype was such a great learning experience, but I think with love is a lot more personal. Um, and that's what's really different about it. I'm a lot more involved um, in the process of everything. Uh, so I think that's what's really different about this EP compared to the hype. So what is your songwriting process like now? So basically, uh, whenever I have a melody in my head, I kind of just voice memo it. Um, I usually start with a melody, and that melody kind of triggers like what emotion I'm feeling. Um, and that emotion then triggers the lyric um, that goes with the melody. So it's kind of like, I usually like to songwrite when <laughs> I'm doing like unconventional things like walking on the street. So I'll sound like I look like a crazy person because I'm like holding my phone and I'm like, get this melody in this voice memo really fast. Otherwise, I'm not going to like remember it. So um, I like to do it when I'm walking and when I'm completely at peace and just like going home or something. A lot of my songwriting I did um, for this EP was actually um, while I was walking home. So it, it because it's such a peaceful way to like, you know, you, when you're going when you're going to class, it's a little bit harder to think of things because you're trying to go to class. But when you're going home, you're just like thinking about like, what am I going to eat? So instead of saying like, what am I going to eat? It's like, what am I going to write today? Um, so that's basically what my process is, is just taking really long walks and kind of like voice memoing everything. Cool. Yeah. So you've done some really awesome covers on YouTube. Who are yeah. some of your favorite artists to cover? So some of my favorite artists to cover. Um, so I'm a very big fan of Beyonce, but I can never cover her. So, I mean, she's my favorite artist. Um, but m some of my favorites are like The Weeknd. I really like Halsey, Drake. As weird as Drake is because he is more of a rapper. Um, I like... Um, Justin Bieber, surprisingly, um, I think his song, his latest album, has a lot of songs that are coverable and easy to make your own. Um, so I could like artists who have songs that are just easy to like kind of like mesh and make something different because like when you have a song that's too structured, you can't really go anywhere with it. But when it's like free flowing, you can like allow. Um, your own style to take over. So I think that's why I like artists who kind of, you know, have that kind of songs, songwriting style too. Um, Banks is another one who I would love to cover soon. So yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, you obviously have a reach outside of your music. Mm -hmm. You recently wrote the article Through the Eyes of a Hijabi. Can you explain your motivation for the piece and what the experience was like? So my motivation for that piece uh, was really um, just because I, I felt really bad about what happened in Paris and in all those other cities, um, in Buhari, Beirut, Baghdad. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting any other city, but during that weekend, there was a lot of like things, chaos going on. And I remember thinking to myself like, oh, please don't let it be a Muslim person. Please don't let it be a Muslim person. And obviously it was, and, um, or they say they're Muslim. And I just wanted to show, because um, there was a lot of hatred on television consistently, 
you know, why are Muslims doing this? Do they preach this in their religion and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what if I came into class wearing a hijab one day? Like no one knows that I'm necessarily Muslim until I tell them. And I want to know what will people think of me differently after these attacks? And will they say things to me? And will they do anything to me? And um, it was always like a, something that I toyed with in my mind. But like after the attacks happened, I really wanted to show and see how people would react. Um, especially since I don't normally wear a hijab. I'm not even that uh, necessarily religious, but like I just wanted to make a statement. And when I wore the hijab for four days and I Snapchatted my experiences, I realized no one really cared. <laughs> Most people were like, oh, what is that on your head? Because they've never like seen me wear one. They were like, why are you wearing a hijab? That's so random. And when I explained them the experiment, they were like, oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Like, keep doing it. And I got so many supportive messages and I was like, see, I, you know, the media hypes up such like negativity towards this religion and towards a lot of other minority groups. It's not just my like minority group that's like targeted, but I feel like they highlight such negativity that there's no room for positivity. There's no room for stories like this um, in the media to get covered. And I think that's what really inspired me to write this article and be like, hey guys, not everyone is some crazy person who is out to discriminate. Um, I don't think anyone is. I think a lot of people are just scared and I think um, the media has really done a good job in scaring both parties. It's not just like, it's the minority group and the non-minority group that are both scared of each other. And I think once they realize that they're both kind of scared of the same thing, they want to protect their children, they want to protect their homes, they want to protect, everyone has like the same goal. They want to protect themselves and their families. and. I think we can stop that by realizing like, hey guys, we're both scared of the same thing. Why don't we just work together so that we're not less scared? Um, so that's why this the, this article took so long to make because I did the experiment in November. Um, but to get that message across took a lot of time and effort. So I'm really happy it turned out the way it did. And I'm really happy about how many people have read it and hopefully are inspired. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, a little less serious of a topic. Mm -hmm. So if you were on a huge headlining tour a few years from now, who would you want as your ideal opener? My ideal opener? That's so hard. I think I would want Kalani. Um, she's one of my favorite artists right now. Kalani or Bryson Tiller. I really enjoy their music. And I think Bryson brings something so cool and different to the table. And it would be really cool to have a guy open. <laughs> and um, he brings some some awesome energy. And Kalani, I think she is just like a firecracker. She is all about being woman. She's all about feminism, but in like a very like awesome way. Like, you know, I do my own thing. I pay my own bills. I'm like, you know, going to be very driven. And I think that's so beautiful. So either Bryson Tiller or Kalani. Cool. Yeah. And last but not least, who is your musical guilty pleasure? Musical guilty pleasure. Uh, I would have to say One Direction sometimes. Sometimes everyone gets in a little One Direction mood. Night changes. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely, and like Zayn Malik's new song, like I have that on repeat and everyone's like, why? <laughs> but like, it's so good. It's so good. The production's great. He sounds great. Um, and the video is like a guilty pleasure in itself. So I'm like, uh, kind of like the 1D Zayn Malik. I guess those are like my guilty pleasure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So thanks so much. Yeah. Looking forward to your new EP coming out. Thank you so much.